there'll be a reception for the Bangladesh Prime Minister with the British Prime Minister. But across the day, another reception on the streets of London. Well, on one thing, the British Foreign Office, these protesters, of course, and a host of human rights groups and charities are agreed, and that is that under Sheikh Hasina's Awami League government, Bangladesh's record on human rights in terms of torture, disappearances of people who are politically inconvenient, has deteriorated seriously. Among the hundreds demonstrating, some here protesting at loved ones suddenly whisked off the streets or from homes and never seen again. Russell Sharia lays the blame squarely for that at the Prime Minister's door. It's 100 percent Sheikh Hasina's personal responsibility because once you run in a governance in the country, anything goes missing, any sort of corruption, that all goes to the Prime Minister, definitely. Including human rights abuse? Including human rights, of course, yes. She arrived this afternoon for a speech on development in central London. Inside, we were able to ask her the question so many Bangladeshis ask. Prime Minister, what Excuse do you me. say to Excuse international me. NGOs Excuse who accuse Excuse your me. regime of I'm, suppressing I'm human sorry. rights? That's a grave I'm, concern. What, what do you say I, to them? I, I would really ask you to respect. But you're not taking questions from the I, British I've press. I've taken one question so far. Not I from the have British time press. That the Prime Minister has to go. We have so one. You're, you're refusing to one. answer that question, Prime Minister. Well, I, I, she, she, I'm sure she you can, can answer she that can question. I have a, a woman in oh, the you're refusing to let us ask the question. That's what's happening here. So, the shame of Bangladesh comes to the heart of the UK. In Manchester, university lecturer Salman Al-Azmi studies pictures of his brother, who was abducted in the Bangladeshi capital a year and a half ago. 30 armed uh, police, uh, civil close men, saying that they're from the detective branch. They came, they, um, you know, came inside, you know, terror terrorised everyone. Um, you know, severely beat up our uh, caretaker. It was it was a terrible situation. And then they found him in one of the flats, and they took him, blindfolded him, took, took him in a car, and since then we have absolutely no news about him. So he simply disappeared. He's completely disappeared. You can cross Britain and find similar tales. In London, we caught up with Abra Ilyas, his father, a former opposition MP disappeared almost six years ago. There was a white van which stopped in front of our car and uh, saw my dad getting picked up by some people. Um, he got picked up, my driver got picked up as well, and our car was left open in the road in the middle of the night. Across town, and Russell Sharia describes the last time the outside world saw his cousin, another opposition activist. It was December 2013. They were just sitting down outside uh, outside a construction place in Dhaka. Suddenly, the uh, Rev Rapid Action Battalion in Bangladesh they just came and picked him from there. And five other people as well picked at the same time. And unfortunately, still we don't know where he is. Yet the Bangladesh Prime Minister has a key family contact at the heart of the British Parliament. Her niece is the Labour MP for Hampstead and Kilburn. Tulip Sadiq, an MP who says she once worked unpaid for the Awami League before she was elected. She once also described herself as a spokesperson for the Awami League and said she owes her election in Britain to the Awami League. She told a newspaper in her London constituency that she never discusses politics with her aunt, just family matters even though she accompanied her to meet President Putin in Moscow. And here she is with her aunt on one of several visits to the Commons. Labour's Tulip Sadiq MP prides herself on being a global human rights campaigner. Surely she can help here. You cannot be a champion of human rights on one occasion and completely remain silent uh, on the other situations where you have some influence. He's lobbied many, including the Foreign Office and recently Tulip Sadiq, asking her to help directly in his brother's case. I'm not one of your parliamentary constituents, and I of course accept that ordinarily you would only intervene in a matter on behalf of a constituent. However, I write as a plea for help, as given your relationship with the government of Bangladesh, 
you are better placed than anyone to make the necessary inquiries and perhaps assist in bringing about the end to the harrowing situation that my family and I find ourselves in. Russell Sharia also wrote again to the MP begging for help in his family's case. Her aunt is the Prime Minister, running Prime Minister in Bangladesh. And uh, she, she has got very good influence over the Bangladeshi politics. So it could be, I mean, just a phone call. Can you please release him? You know, one person's life can be saved, whole family can be relieved. We've investigated the plight of several disappeared individuals in Bangladesh in recent months. All have strong UK connections. Tulip Sadiq insists parliamentary rules mean she cannot get involved. And she told us she has no influence over her aunt. We believe she's also acted to contact the Foreign Office. And not only that, for the first time in these cases, she's written back to Russell Sharia and Salman Al Azmi, openly criticising the human rights situation in Bangladesh. I deplore the use of extrajudicial detention and any human rights abuses anywhere in the world, including Bangladesh. I understand and have sympathy for the plight of anyone whose loved ones disappears in such a way. But there are broader questions about the Labour Party generally and its links to the Awami League. We can reveal that in recent years several Labour MPs, including the Shadow Foreign Secretary Emily Thornbury, seen here with Tulip Sadiq in Parliament, have referred to the League as a sister party of Labour. The Labour Party told this programme that was an error. The Awami League is not a sister party of Labour. The MPs simply got it wrong, they said. They, like the Foreign Office, remain deeply concerned over worsening human rights in the country. Disappearances, murders, torture, intimidation and arbitrary detention. All of it, say human rights groups, getting worse, not better.